All right, hello. In this video, we're going to finish up this uh, worksheet. Again, we're looking at uh, 10.3, looking at absorbing Markov chains from um, the Sullivan textbook. And in uh, the last video, we figured out the absorbing states for this uh, Markov chain transition matrix. Then we rewrote the matrix with the absorbing states basically in the upper left and the non-absorbing states uh, below. And then we're going to use that to basically split apart, to convert the transition matrix into four, or four, not necessarily equal, they will be in this case, but four different partitions. And then we computed the fundamental matrix. So again, I highly encourage you uh, in the textbook, in this section, give yourself some good notes for the exam, because there's a lot of material that I don't expect you to memorize, but I do expect you to be able to apply. So, um, we finished up last video computing this uh, fundamental matrix T of the transition matrix P, the identity minus Q, and Q is kind of the bottom left of the rewritten transition matrix. Do the identity minus Q, then take the inverse in your calculator or software, and then we got this right here. So I'm gonna kind of partition this off. We're gonna use this fundamental matrix. And we're looking at, and again, labeling these, I think, is the utmost importance. Since we're starting, uh, we started with Q. We manipulated this bottom matrix. Both of the columns correspond with uh, B and C, non-absorbing states. And both rows also correspond with non-absorbing states, B and C. So you, we can use this to answer questions like, what is the expected number of times a state will stay in B before being absorbed? And again, uh, there's some good um, highlighted and boxed um, important parts of 10.3 uh, around page 604, or just scroll through 10.3 if you have the electronic version. But we need to take, um, the answer for this is the sum of the B row of T. So the expected number of states, so I need to look at row B right here. So it's going to be 3.846 plus 1.538. Add those two together and about 5.384 times. Right, that's what we'd expect if we start uh, in state B. It will probably stay um, in the state before being absorbed about five times. So I like to think about that up here. Most often it's going to stay in state B, stay in state B. It has a chance of going over to A, only 15% chance. So it could go over the first time, but it's a small percentage. What that number says is if we were to run like a simulation, this over and over again, it would stay in state B about five or six times before jumping over to you know, C then D or directly to A, one of these two absorbing states. If we want to know the expected number of times a state will stay in state C, uh, again, the keyword here is expected number. We're going to look at this fundamental matrix T and look at the row that corresponds to C. So we're going to take the sum of the C row of this fundamental matrix C, and that is 1.538 plus. 4.615, and that adds up to uh, a little over 6.153 times. So the idea is if we start in state C, and I like to think this has a slightly higher uh, uh, rate where it's going to stay in C. And if you notice right here, there's a 75% chance that uh, we will stay in state, state C versus only a 70% chance. So to me, that would kind of make sense why there's a higher number for the expected value for state C. Okay, I'm going to flip this over. Look at the other page. Now we have probability questions. So what is the probability that if we are in state B, we end up being absorbed in state A? All right, so... This one, we need to compute another matrix to find probability. And again, I highly suggest this, this is summarized very well in the chapter. So I'm referencing, you know, 10.3 in the 600s. And to compute this value, 
I am going to compute the matrix. Be careful here. T times S. So if we're looking at that, the matrix T um, on the other side is this fundamental matrix. And S is this matrix right here. Again, this is not a 5. This is an S. So I'm going to multiply these two matrices together. So matrix T times matrix S. And since there's kind of messy decimals there, I just threw those in my calculator. T times S. And you should get uh, 0 0.654, 0 0.346, 0.462 and 0.538. Okay, now I want to add some labels to this. So to add labels, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at S for the labels. I'll show you why this kind of helps me keep track of this. So if I go here to this partitioned S, notice on this uh, matrix S, the bottom left, the columns are the two absorbing states, A and D, looking at matrix S on the bottom left. So if I want to label this, this right here, I'm going to label the first column A and the second column D. And I'm looking again over um, S right here. The rows are the non-absorbing states, B and C. So if we go back over here, I'm going to label this B and label this C. All right, and this, I think, is actually all the hard work. We can answer all these questions now. So if I look over here, what's the probability that if we are in state B? So I'm going to think right here, I'm looking at this first row, state B. What's the probability that we end up in state A? Is this 0.65? percent. So just like we retransition matrices going from B to A, 0.654. If we are in state B, what's the probability that you get up being absorbed into state D? I'm still looking at this first row, but now I need to go to the second column. That's 0.346. If we are in state C, now I'm going to look at the second row. What's the probability of being absorbed into state A? That's 0.462. And lastly, if we are in state C, what is the probability of being absorbed in state D? That is the second row, second column, 0.538. All right, and this concludes this video.